welcome back to our Book Talk segment. Great to welcome back. Yeah, his third visit with us, and that means he's got another great book out, part of his uh, Quinn Colson series, and this one is called Heathens and the Heathens, and we're joined today by the great uh, mystery and uh, thriller and crime writer Ace Atkins, who also did a lot of work in our area down here in Tampa Bay, formerly with uh, a couple of newspapers. We'll uh, go over that again briefly, but Ace Atkins joined us by telephone, and Ace, good to talk with you. How are you? Hey, good to talk to you, too. Thanks for having me back on. Yeah, just checking the archives again. About a year ago, we had you on, so uh, you're keeping your schedule very uh, very prolific with the books, so that's good. <laughs> hey, trying to, trying to keep the machine going, for sure. That's it, that's it. Before we get into the, into the books again, in case people weren't with us before, you were a former uh, reporter for uh, well, the Tampa Tribune down here and the St. Pete Times, uh, so uh, you're, you're quite familiar with, yeah, uh, with the area. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I started my career uh, as a correspondent for the for the Times, and then uh, went over and worked uh, uh, almost my whole career for the, the Tampa Tribune. So, uh, yeah, I know every I know every uh, place in, in Tampa, every street. It's very familiar to me. I worked there very briefly when I first came down as a sports stringer when they used to be downtown Tampa. So uh, a great paper, although I guess they've kind of combined now the, the St. Pete Times and Tribune a few years ago. It's, it's like one paper now. So I guess that's that's the uh, the bane of the newspaper business nowadays, I guess. You got out just in time. That, that is it. <laughs> I did. I did. I didn't. I thought I was I thought I was making a foolish uh, leap when I got out of uh, journalism and, and started writing novels. But uh, yeah, the the Tribune folded. It was uh, purchased and, you know, rolled into the Times. And uh, But I miss those days. It's been a lot of time at the, that downtown news office and covered a lot of stories. So Tampa is a very uh, special place to me, for sure. And Tampa, I mean, that kind of led, I guess, to your uh, being able to write these these crime novels because Tampa has had a history of interesting uh, things that have happened, right, <laughs> in, the, in the past. Not always yeah, all that's good. Under, that's an, that's an under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's an understatement. I think for anything wild, weird, horrific, uh, pretty much covered it all in Tampa. Um, I mean, t- Tampa Bay is kind of ground zero for you know uh, unusual and offbeat crime, and uh, it was you know I, I learned a lot. I used to cover the um, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Uh, a good friend of mine is the former sheriff David G. Uh, I remember covering the the Tampa Police Department when uh, Jane Castor was a, a captain. Oh, there. sure, she was yeah. leading the. Uh, yeah, she was a terrific detective, and uh, so anyway, all that stuff went into the formation of my novels, for sure. My books are set here in the Deep South, but there are many, many Florida connections. And in this particular book, The Heathens, the one we're talking about today, just just came out, by the way, uh, kind of based on uh, a crime that happened in uh, in Tampa, right, back in the late 90s? Did I get that right? Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Not, not necessarily based, but really kind of was a it was a point of inspiration. I uh, I've written books that are true crime novels before. I wrote a book actually set in Tampa called White Shadow. It was about some killing mob killings in um, Ybor City back in the fifties. And this was really just kind of an idea. Uh, I covered uh, back in the late eighty late nineties. I covered uh, the Vanessa Robinson case, which is very well known to people in Tampa. The fourteen year old girl that was. Um, um, convicted of killing her mother along with uh, two other two other uh, teens and so that story really had stayed with me over the years but uh, you know it was an incredible case not only the horrific murder but uh, these kids went on the run as law enforcement was getting close to them and eventually they were brought to justice they were found in Texas and brought back to Tampa but I always wondered when they were out on the run you know what that was like day to day trying to stay ahead of the you know law enforcement trying not to get captured but also you know the real catalyst for the heathens is, is what if these kids had been innocent and what if they were running um, because they thought they had been railroaded and so that's that was the idea for the book that was the genesis it's not right. the Lesser Robinson story it's not you know but the idea of a, of a teen being accused of killing their own mother that was certainly was a was a catalyst yeah and again for people that may not be uh, fully aware of it quinn colson is the the main character of course uh, this is i believe number uh, 11 in the series and uh, he's a former uh, army ranger and he now is a became a sheriff in mississippi so uh, i'll let you take it from there because i don't like to give away uh, any of the plot lines so uh, what happens this time well, this, you know, in this particular story, uh, all my books, uh, all the Quinn Colson books are set in this uh, um, county in North Mississippi. And it's a, it's a rural county. It's uh, about 100 miles uh, outside Memphis. Um, it's a place where Quinn Colson, after he was in the Army, he, he came home uh, to help clean up the corruption and uh, some of the, the nastiness that was in the county. And he was elected sheriff in the process. And so in this particular story, he's encountering a teenage girl. Uh, in my story, her name's uh, 
TJ Bird. Mm-hmm. Uh, TJ, uh, her mother, her mother has been killed, and TJ has been accused of uh, of the murder. And then she, along with her ten year old brother and two friends, um, steal a minivan and they go go uh, cross country trying to evade the law. And Quinn is trying to find out what actually happened. And meanwhile, there's a tough as nails uh, federal marshal named Lily Virgil who's hot on their trail. Yeah, T. Uh... Quinn, like you said in the book, uh, he was kind of a, a juvenile delinquent himself a bit, right? So he kind of uh, feels a little bit for this uh, character that he tends to want to believe her, right? So where other people, nobody else does. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like a lot of kids, a lot of a lot of a lot of, a lot of adults. You know, we we didn't have the easiest time growing up and being teenagers, and we made some mistakes and some things that we did and some things that we got accused of that we didn't do. And so uh, I think Quinn is a good moral compass, a good understanding person, and he wants to really get to the truth without, um, you know, uh, accusing anybody too quickly. And then he, he knows TJ. He knows she's run afoul of the law in some uh, places. But he also has other suspects and other people he's looking at. And so uh, these kids, uh, it's, it's really – Quinn is a, a major character in the book, but it's really about Quinn. It's also about Lily Virgil, the U.S. Marshal, tracking down these kids. And it's really mainly about these kids. It's really about uh, T.J. Bird and her boyfriend, the various uh, Cade. And it's it's about them trying to, uh, you know, to, to get some justice while trying to stay alive. Yeah. Did you base the, uh, the uh, Marshal Virgil on anybody that you've uh, covered? You know, I, I, again, I was uh, fortunate in in, uh, in Florida to work with a lot of really um, terrific uh, female law enforcement officers, women in law enforcement, and uh, you know, people like Jane Castor, who was just a terrific, tough cop. Yeah. Uh, there's also a woman named Lisa Glasscock, who was a detective that worked uh, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, and so I met these women in law enforcement, and and, and you know, they often were smarter. And, <laughs> You know, and more talented than a lot of their male counterparts, <laughs> and they were pretty, pretty impre- uh, impressive crew, crew of people. And so that's really what into to the character of Lily Virgil, and uh, I hope she's a tribute to those those women that I had the fortune of covering as a reporter. There's not too many, I guess, U.S. Marshals that are women, right? In real life, I mean, there's probably yeah, not too many. Know. Right? I don't know what the I don't know what, I, I don't know what the percentage is. Yeah. I'm actually, uh, one of my good friends here, uh, she is a uh, longtime uh, U.S. Marshal. And she started off actually working in the marshal's office, uh, not as a, as a deputy marshal, but just working, doing clerical work. And about 20 years ago, she thought, geez, I can do this and maybe even better than some of these guys. And she went through the training and she did the whole, uh, you know, everything she needed to do. And she became a marshal and was a working marshal for years. Now she's more into administration and that kind of thing. But uh, she is terrific, tough as nails, and provides a lot of background for uh, for the character of Lily Bird. Yeah. Well, great, uh, great idea for a uh, plot line. And again, uh, uh, being the 11th installment, uh, I, I know I've asked you this before, but in case people weren't with us, uh, Quinn Colson obviously has uh, kind of grown, right, over the uh, over the years, uh, continues to evolve, right, the main character. Yeah, I, th- I, I think that what's different with this uh, the series, unlike, you know, some other books that you might read where there's a continuing hero, a continuing character where everything is static and, you know, you go from book to book but nothing changes, is, is when you read these books, the 11 books, that the world continues to grow and Quinn grows and, you know, changes and he gets older and when the book started, he came back to town with nothing other than his army rucksack and, you know, this old beaten up house that he had inherited and trying to find some kind of... Uh, you know, new way of life, and now he's married. He's got two kids. Uh, he's been a longtime sheriff. He's you know an elected official, and so uh, you get to by reading all the books, uh, you get to kind of see the evolution of this this county in Mississippi, which is uh, tremendous fun for me. Yeah, and you live up in Mississippi still, right? I do. I'm talking to you right here from yeah. the uh, beautiful Oxford, Mississippi Square, uh, and so there's a yeah continual inspiration, continual characters and great fodder for books. I mean, nothing, uh, you know, it's hard to beat Florida. <laughs> you know, Florida's got, got the, you know, but, but we have our share of interesting stuff here in Mississippi as well. No doubt. Again, the name of the book is The Heathens, a Quinn and Colson novel, and number 11 in the series. And uh, Ace Atkins has been our guest. And Ace, uh, once again, give out your website, if you would, or where people can get the book. Uh, books are out everywhere, everywhere that uh, five books are sold. Uh, online and uh, i mean digital and, and also audio and then if you want to find out more of course there is aceatkins.com and i'm on instagram and twitter and all those kind of channels as well great i should also mention ace uh, also played defensive end at auburn so i guess you're starting to get ready for college football again as, as a fan right <laughs> <laughs> 
Not me. Not not me. I I, I had my share. I'm, I'm good. Not to play, but I, to, uh, but to watch, right? You still follow Auburn? No, no, no. Not to not to play. I'll watch <laughs> it uh, a little bit. I'm not. I, I wouldn't say I'm a really dedicated football fan. Yeah. I think I had my fill growing up. Um, but uh, you know, certainly we'll catch a game here or there when I can. But uh, usually, the the, uh, the season means for me is a is a new deadline and working on a big project. So uh, even though the Heathens is out, I'll be working on a new book this fall and getting right into it. Great, and we'll talk to you when that comes out as well. But in the meantime, uh, invite everybody to get the Heathens. We'll have a, web, a link on our website as well. Hey, Zatkins, always good talking to you. Continue good luck, and we'll talk to you soon. Always great talk. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.